great to see you again. Nice to see you, Duncan. <laughs> Thanks for having Welcome. me. So, you've been listening to some of the other panelists? I have. What yes. do you disagree with? What's rubbish of what they've said? Hopefully nothing. But oh, I, uh, Nothing struck me as that I disagree with. I agree with, uh, I think, a lot of uh, uh, what, I've, what I've been hearing, and it certainly is a very exciting time to be um, investing in China. Um, I'm at the different end of right, the spectrum. Like, yeah, I'm at uh, the earliest uh, seed stage. So, right. I'm generally, I invested in 12 startups last year and was always the first investor. Mm -hmm. um, all in China? Or? All, all Chinese teams okay. in China, focused on Chinese markets um, in mobile, consumer internet, games, new media, some of the same areas that okay. um, the larger VCs are investing in. Um, but because we're on the earliest stage, uh, we're not seeing the bubble effects or the valuation impacts yeah. that are happening at the later stage. The valuations are very reasonable, um, and uh, uh, I hope that there's more competition for me. Uh, the, the, the young entrepreneurs, I think, in China have a tough time getting, That's right. getting to that first stage, getting to those first million users, those first million RMB a month in revenue, because there's just not a lot of... Uh, Angel investing yet, it's starting to pick up, and there's not a lot of uh, seed stage funds yet. Um, we're starting to see a lot more, you know, a few more, which is great. And why, why is that, do you think? Is it just uh, hesitancy well, or just lack um, of experience? Or, or? You mean, wh wh <coughs> why is there a lack of people doing the first stage yeah. in China? I mean, what's the, I mean it, it's a problem. I think it can't be a problem everywhere, but. Uh, well, I think in the US, for example, um, a team of five, six, seven students, Stanford, they might need a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, for a VC, they can, they can have a seed stage part of their fund putting a million dollars at work. Well, that same team here doesn't need a million dollars. They need $100,000. And that's really hard for a large fund to get involved with those tiniest of mm -hmm. size investments. So I think you don't see any of the larger VCs competing with right. me right. investing in these seed stage teams. Okay. Well, that's kind of the order of magnitude you're talking about, the, the 100,000 or, or less. Yeah, I like to give teams enough money to run for two years. Two years, okay. And, uh, and I find that the most capital efficient teams are often going to be the most successful. So we like to invest in teams that are very capital efficient, typically burn rates uh, sub 30,000 RMB a month okay. when we're investing. To get them to the, the A round. Or, yeah, yeah when we're on a mission with the teams once we invest is to help, yeah, them, right. get, help them get to that next level. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of our investments now have gotten to the big Series A deals. Mm -hmm. But what, we're, we're, what, we, what we want our teams to focus on in their first two years is building great product. Okay. A great product evidenced by the fact that they went from zero to 10 million active users, or they went from zero to a million RMB a month in revenue, or uh, building big external proof that their product is great. And how do you meet these people, other than conferences like this, I'm sure? But. Um, <laughs> uh, about 95% um, of my deal flow comes from five universities. So I, every week I'm at Tsinghua, Beida, Beihang, Shanghai Zhaotong, Zhejiang universities, and I try and get in front of thousands of students a month, and I try to convince them to start companies. And uh, I want Trilogy VC to be a brand on the top campuses in China so that when students think startup, they think Trilogy VC. And so that's where I get our deal flow. So that's through talks about? Um, I hold events. Um, I think one of the things that keeps students from starting more companies in China is they see a lack of role models. Mm -hmm. So for example, Olivier was just up here. Um, one of his CEOs is an awesome guy named Qi Guo Shang who started a company called Gridsum. That was his third startup. Um, his first two were while he was a student at Tsinghua. So, you know, he's nailing it. And he's got, you know, millions of RMB a month, and he's got huge VC backing, and he's been a big success story. So I invite him to our events and let him tell his story and provide role models. Because he doesn't look any different than the audience, right? And the idea is that you guys in the audience can do this too. Um, and so we, we hold events where we have successful entrepreneurs that are in their 20s come talk to the students and provide role models. They need more of that. And then we let the students come up on stage and say their change the world idea. We give them 60 seconds. Typically, <laughs> we'll have 20 students parade up on stage, and the audience votes. And I hand the winner 3,000 RMB cash. And that, that's a, a driver of uh, getting people to come to our events and fill in the room. Have you done what's uh, famously being done in the States by uh, the, the, sorry, the PayPal guy, whose name escapes me, who's, uh, I will give you $100,000 if you quit college today. 
Um, <laughs> might not be very popular. Um, we're, we're, we don't. I, I'm. I, uh, we're not, I'm with not Chinese saying values that. Of, yeah. I'm not saying that, but I'm happy to back students that are going to drop out of school. Right. Yes, okay. and I'm happy to do that. And uh, there's been a number of cases where we have provided uh, seed stage funding to students and they've stopped their studies. And the parents haven't come off to you? Or? Um, yeah, that is a big deal here. That is a big deal. Um, uh, that hasn't happened. I haven't been chased here, so, no. down yet. No. no. Because as I say, it's a cultural shift, right, obviously, to, to take that level of risk. And we, we see the same described in, in India. And there's always been this interesting analysis. Why do, for example, so many Indians and Chinese do very successfully in Silicon Valley outside of the sort of traditional cultural and family things. I mean, that's changing now. Um, but the risk-taking element of it and failure, fear of failure. Oh, I mean, yes. How, how do you talk about that with the, with these, uh, with the startups? Well, and, and I, I really, I, I, I think um, entrepreneurs naturally are going to see risk differently than the normal person. Right. And I've started three companies. I can speak from my own experience. Um, that I never saw what I was doing as risky, although my parents would be very freaked out, <laughs> okay. right? That I'm quitting this big job, right, at this big company. they were always very supportive? Company. No, they good, were not. Okay. Of course right. not. Right. Okay. But I think here the pressure from parents and society is even higher mm. because there's not the Bill Gates and the Larry and Sergey and the Mark Zuckerberg and the Steve Jobs and all these examples of successful student-led startups yet. There's a few, but... but uh, they're coming. Zingle, uh, They're coming. And, and well, like we, we, I just talked about Chi Guo Sheng at Gridsum. These guys are going to nail it okay. and they're going to start, you know, they're going to be very successful. They're going to be on the front page of the newspapers in, in China. And I think over time, we're going to have less society pressure to not do startup. Okay. And you mentioned a number of universities, including the you know, Zhejiang. And so, do you see any regional differences? And we all know that you know uh, Wenzhou and Zhejiang are sort of the you know that's where the real entrepreneurs. Uh, that's where the word came from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you see a difference there? Was yes, this, uh, yes, yes. In what what, what ways? Um, so there's a few. Um, uh, I, I, I want to be nice. Um, no, you don't have but, to. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so, so for example, I used to spend a lot of time at Fudan University, and I've given up on Fudan University. Um, I, I, I'm in Shanghai Jiaotong University every two weeks, and I find it tough there because in Shanghai especially, I think the society pressure on the students to go get 12,000 RMB a month in the, salary the gold is job. very yeah. high. Right. Very high, even I, I, relative to what I see in Beijing. Right. Um, you mentioned Zhejiang. Yeah. There's an entrepreneurial culture at Zhejiang University, and there's so many good examples of entrepreneurs there. And you have Jack Ma and Hangzhou, and such an icon there, that I find when I ask the students, how many of you are going to go do a startup after you leave school, the hands go up at Zhejiang University more than any other school that I see. Right. Um, I'm also blown away, like when I go to Beijing, uh, to Beida, especially Daxing campus, way south in the middle of nowhere, and they're all engineers, there are some great entrepreneurs there and some great new products coming out of there. So, uh, so I do see differences, and I think Shanghai... What kind of areas are just in, in Daxing? What, what are you seeing out of... Oh, um, uh, they're, they're uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of what I get at the universities, I get a lot of the MBAs and the and the business students, and they have ideas and they can talk. When I go to Beijing Daxing campus, I see prototypes and I see alpha okay. products stuff because people have built stuff. So one kid came on the stage um, three weeks ago, and he had this uh, device that you put on your arm, and uh, uh, you give to your old parents as they're getting sick and, and less and less healthy. And if they fall, you get a text message, and it monitors you. And, and it, the kid had it, and it worked, right? That's how he got his parents to, to back the thing. Self-interest. Which was so cool. <laughs> and, and then, and then we, we talked, and, and he was like, we need to make it simpler. And I agreed. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to make a new version where there's no buttons on it. And it lasts for a year. And you never turn it on or turn it off. It just works. And then he came to another one of my events a week ago at Tsinghua, and he won. Hmm. Wow. And so now he's building 20 of these things. And you know, he's off to the races. So he sells the um, expenses. Another team at, at <laughs> Dashing, they had a replacement for touch media, the screens right. in the cab. And it watched your eyeballs. And it watched if you were watching the advertisement. And if it wasn't, it switched it. 
but they, they didn't just talk about it, they showed it to me, right? So that's what I loved about uh, the engineer founders who actually That's really scary, but potentially very disruptive. So. Yeah, I mean, and today a, a number of the speakers talked about, uh, the earlier speakers yep. this morning, they talked about what's the key to success. And what you heard from at least three different speakers, I heard the idea of doing it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what gets me really excited is when I see young teams that are actually taking the steps and doing it and executing and building a product. Okay. Yeah. And so you're pretty bullish, sounds. Obviously, you're investing. You're putting your money where your mouth is. So. Yeah, we did 12 last year. I'm trying to do 15 this year. I want to do maybe 15, more than one a month. I'm a little behind right now, uh, but I'm, uh, I've got a number of good ones that I'm looking at right is now. Is it you? Or it's just me, and I have a team of interns. Uh, okay. Interns <laughs> in uh, Shanghai, Hangzhou, and Beijing that help me. All right. And, and in the U.S., you had started firms, and the, that experience is... You're, to some extent, sure. My first startup was in Europe. My second okay. startup was in California. My third startup was in Shanghai. Okay. Um, venture funded, venture backed startups. Uh, so I had a uh, lot of experience being the entrepreneur. Um, and it's much easier to be the investor. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so I'm really enjoying what I'm doing right now. Yes. And would you attempt to do this in, in the States or in Europe? Or is it deal done? Uh, my the, brother's a partner at Highland Capital in right. Silicon Valley, and he's investing early stage stuff. Um, it costs him seven to ten times more yeah. per deal than it costs me. And China's uh, growing faster, uh, more opportunities, uh, going to be the biggest economy in the world. So I think uh, I've got more upside and 10x less cost. So I can be, he can be, you know, ten times smarter and I'll still probably win. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty bullish on China. Shout out to his brother here. So. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get him out on the, in the yeah. next one. <laughs> well, great. Well, I think we're running out of time. That's a very interesting story, and we look forward to seeing that. Let us know when you're uh, on a campus that's near us. I guess we have a blog or something. We'll come along and see the enthusiasm great. we're talking about. I'm at uh, Beijing Dashing campus on Saturday night, tomorrow Dash. night, Prototype. and there'll be a couple of hundred students. Uh, Twenty of them will come up on stage, and uh, we're going to have a fun event. Great. Bring them along next time. That'll okay. be great. Thank Thanks, you. Duncan. Thanks a lot. <laughs>